Well, welcome back to Living Local. It is time to check in with Movie Mike for what's new in theaters, plus a look at some of the old fun stuff, too. Mike yeah. Schultz, arts editor for the River City Theater, with us once again every week. We appreciate you being here. Great to be week here. Week after week. Love it. And, yes. Uh, you had a very busy holiday weekend. They kept me moving. Yeah. Six movies in five days. Wow. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. a lot. I'm impressed as It well. wasn't too much. I mean, I've done quadruple features, so doing two movies instead of four is just fine. That's, wow. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, We'll start with the movies that you liked, yeah. really, really liked, in your words. Uh, Creed Two, one of the first. Ones. Oh, Creed Two! What a blast! Mm -hmm. It was so great. Uh, what I wrote is that basically Creed Two is to Creed what Rocky Two is to Rocky, if okay. that helps, yeah. because it's all a little bit more. It's a little bit more surfacey. It's a little bit more pr predictable. It's got yeah. an arc that you're like, okay, I know what's going to happen in the first <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, they know what they're doing in this thing, and yeah. it is really exciting. This is Adonis Creed, played by Michael B. Jordan again, mm -hmm. who uh, within the first ten minutes of the movie becomes the world champion of, of uh, in boxing. Good for him. Which, right, exactly yeah. right. And But that would be a climax for most movies. Yeah. This starts in the first 10 minutes oh, with wow. that. And then he winds up fighting a Russian boxer who is the son of Ivan Drago, yeah. who is the boxer who killed Adonis's father in Rocky oh, Four, and the, yeah. there's a lot going on here. Yeah. Uh, at one point, the, uh, the ringside announcers say, it feels Shakespearean, and you're like, yeah, that's <laughs> how it was designed. Uh, so it's pretty obvious, but yeah. it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Really, really well acted. Uh, Stallone is great again as Rocky. Really? Tessa that's Thompson good. is great. Yeah. The boxer, the, the villainous boxer, is an actual professional boxer yeah. who gives a beautiful performance. Really? A really, really, and it's a really three-dimensional character. Hmm. Um, Dolph Lundgren is back as Ivan, <laughs> and he's fantastic. Yeah, you always kind of wonder when those guys time. are going to start to really drop off. But exactly right. No, in this, in this series, yeah, Stallone, yeah. too, has never been better than this either. Yeah. It took 70 years, but he's great now. <laughs> That's good. It was, it was a great time. Yeah. I cool. loved it. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. And uh, for the families, you really enjoyed Ralph Breaks the Internet. Ralph Breaks the Internet, yes. I actually had to go back to my review of Wreck-It Ralph to see if I even liked it because yeah. I saw it once yeah. and I, went, I realized I didn't so much. Didn't. Uh, it was fine. It was okay. Yeah. Um, this one is really inventive. This, uh, uh, after kind of a slow 15-ish, 20 minutes, <laughs> they go into, uh, it's Ralph and his little friend, uh, the race car demon. They go into the <laughs> internet and they visit you know, every social media site, every online shopping store. There is a scene in this that might be the funniest five minutes of the year where oh, really? uh, the speed racer goes to meet all of the Disney princesses. <laughs> um, and they're all like, you know, and you got the little mermaid there and she's like, look at this shirt, isn't yeah. it? You know, it's, it's a ride. And they got yeah. all of the original celebrity voices to do reprise their roles. Yeah. So it's the same Mulan, it's the same Belle from Beauty and the Beast, it's the really? same Pocahontas, it's Elsa and Anna and it's just a hoot. That's amazing. And the whole movie is just clever like that and it's mm -hmm. uh it's got really good morals for kids. All those movies do. Yeah. This one has a really nicely specific one saying that you can have a best friend but the best friend doesn't have to like what you like and they don't even have to live in the same town you live in. I mean it's yeah. it's okay that they yeah. will still be friends even if they're far away, even if they're doing other things. It was uh, it was terrific. That's cool. Really yeah. good movie. Really glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that one out for sure. And this one as it well. Was fun. We didn't get a chance to talk about this last week, but it is local. Mm -hmm. uh, Green Book with Viggo Mortensen. Yes, indeed. This is based on a true story of a uh, an Italian American uh, limo well limo driver. He applies for a job to take this uh, bl black classical pianist Don, Don Shirley, a real mm -hmm. man, through a tour of the Deep South. Mm. And so it's basically exactly driving Miss Daisy with the races reversed. Okay. Um, and you, but you've got, uh, but uh, it's it's irresistible. It is kind of a terrible movie in many ways, okay. as far as being kind of crushingly obvious. And it spells out all of its themes in capital block letters, so yeah. you can't miss it. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of offensive as history, but it is such a hoot as an mm. odd couple movie. You've got yeah. Mahershala Ali basically playing Felix Unger. He's this very fastidious, very kind of prissy, uh, you know, cultured man who doesn't use any control. Attractions and everything yeah. is it is this and yeah. you know and then you've got Viggo Mortensen basically doing Joey Tribbiani from Friends. <laughs> uh, at one point he orders a pizza from room service, a whole pizza, folds it in half and shoves it in his mouth and oh, starts eating. I'm amazing. like, that's a Joey move. That is very Joey. Yeah, yeah. It, but the jokes are great. Yeah. Um, the the actors, of course, are. Phenomenal! Yeah. It's Mortensen and Ali. That's that's wonderful right there. You have Linda Cardellini playing Vigo's wife, and I okay. love her yeah. from ER and uh, Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's exactly what you think it's going to be in many ways, but really witty and uh, and, mm -hmm. and smart and well done. 
And the audience I saw it with applauded at the end. Wow. They had a ball. It yeah. was it was pretty packed too. It's already it was, gotten some nods as well. Yeah, for sure. The National Board of Review just named it Best Picture, and Vigo Mortensen got Best Actor. Um, it's looking like it could be a bona fide Oscar contender. Yeah, that'll be fun. It's it's yeah. strong. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad that's around here too. If, if you go in with your your hopes kept a little bit low, it doesn't yeah. hurt. Okay. Sounds we'll good. say that. Yeah. Alrighty, and uh, one you're going to need extremely low expectations for, Robin Hood. <laughs> how, about, how about no expectations? No expectations okay, all. so, well, Robin Hood <laughs> is back. Yeah. Okay, what are you going to do differently? Well, what they've decided to do differently this time is because it's comic book culture, it's an origin story. Oh, so we, wow. uh, so it's all, right, it's all about how Robin Hood uh, decided got hood. to, got his hood. <laughs> yeah. He met Little John and got training as an archer. Um, the first 20 minutes, it's kind of like an Iraq war thriller I mean it's all what? very just loud and yeah. it's it's all oh it's but it's so aggressively irritating because you're like this should be fun material we've known this since we were kids yeah. you know mm -hmm. this is this is great and you got Friar Tuck who should be a lot of laughs and you got the sheriff of Nottingham mm -hmm. who should be just kind of delightfully mean yeah. in this thing he's just a perverse uber villain that's just yeah. unpleasant to be around mm -hmm. a pretty good performance by Ben Mendelsohn but nothing you want to sit through Taron Egerton, who's usually so charming in the Kingsman movies yeah. and such, he just has nothing to do. And the whole thing, it's, oh, it's endless. It's like yeah. two hours and there's not a, a joyful scene in it. It's yeah. just oppressive action blockbuster nonsense that uh, is, is boring as all get out. Yeah, and they're calling it the block, uh, or the, uh, the biggest bust of the year, the oh. biggest flop with how much they spent versus how much they made. Yeah, it's just not, and you don't have to spend it. that much. I mean, the, it's free material, it's public yeah. domain. So. Yeah. Um, just really badly thought out, yeah. um, threatening sequels for us. I'm not, I'm not counting on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I don't They'll think just so. reboot it again in six years they anyway. Will. We'll just wait a little bit. Exactly we'll be right. right back. Alrighty, well, yeah. we'll move through the new ones this week pretty quickly, but it's a light weekend after the busy holiday weekend. Uh, we've got the first up, The Possession of Hannah Grace. The Possession of Hannah Grace. Sounds scary. Here's a, yes, it is uh, <laughs> sounding scary. Um, it, is, it is about a police officer who's just got out of rehab, and so to kind of collect herself, she decides to take a job as a uh, in, in a morgue, um, basically yeah. doing morgue security during the late shift. And it turns out that there is an evil entity possessing one of the cadavers Ugh. and causing all sorts of trauma for <laughs> her and uh, those around her. Yeah. Now, of course, the, the, the tricky thing is that cadavers don't have souls. Yeah. Uh, so they're just, so they're, how is it? I'm not quite sure who's, yeah. where the possession comes in, <laughs> unless it's just possessing a yeah, lifeless I body. I do dolls either, and that I seems to happen I guess, time. yeah. But, uh, you know, we didn't get any horror movies over Thanksgiving weekend, so I guess they're figuring, ah, for that underserved crowd, yes. let's bring something up this Good week. for them. All right, we'll see how it goes. I think, uh, I mean, at least giving them a, a nod for a new original idea. <laughs> I guess, exactly. We haven't possession. had that before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All righty, and a f uh, 50s marital drama, Wildlife? Yes, uh, this is Jake Gyllenhaal and Carey Mulligan, both mm. terrific actors, Oscar nominees. It's set, yeah. uh, I think, early 60s, as a matter of fact, set in, Mon okay. in Montana. Montana, um, where there are a bunch of rampaging forest fires uh, going on, so also a timely theme yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal goes off to fight the fires, kind of abandons his wife and teenage son at home, and uh, the wife begins conducting an affair uh, mm. and doesn't hide it from her child. It kind of makes him part of the uh, kind of a part of the hiding it from their father. Okay. And uh, it sounds really um, the review's been great. It played at Sundance earlier this year. Yeah, it's got of course wonderful performers. It's being directed by Paul Dano, mm. who's a wonderful actor from uh, Little Miss Sunshine, yeah. There Will Be Blood, and Love and Mercy, the mm -hmm. Beach Boys film. Yeah, and it's written by Zoe Kazan, one of my favorites, who's on yeah. uh, Ballad of Buster Scruggs right now. Okay, is killing it in that show. Yeah. It's yeah. it's so great. So mm. yeah, something. To, and again, a little bit of a uh, little bit of variety if you don't want to go see the Possession of Hannah Grace. Yeah, something so, a little more dramatic. Cool. Exactly. Well, right. Awesome. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. My pleasure, it. So, man. Sure. Got those two movies here, The Possession of Hannah Grace and Wildlife. And uh, you can check out Mike's movie reviews inside the latest reader and on stands everywhere and online at rcreader.com. We'll be back with more Living Local after this. You can also check out all this on our Quad City. Channel.